we got the chart professor back. Now, we went through all the different charts. He walked us through four charts, line, bar, candlestick, point, and figure, right? And you also told us about three things to watch for. Pay attention to the trend line. We read right to left like the Torah. And um, it's not the news, it's how the stock reacts. We know all that now, so now we're gonna move on to technical indicators. Right. Super important when you're using charts, what is a technical indicator? So an indicator is really a derivative of the price action. Instead of trying to figure out uh, the lines and the squiggles, we're taking the numbers and putting them in a mathematical formula. People like them because it's math and it's not subjective. When you look at a chart and I look at a chart, we come to a different conclusion. Mm -hmm even though we're looking at the same thing. Right. So people like the certainty of an indicator. But it has to make logical sense. Right. You can't just like make it up. Yeah. And even though an indicator may be telling you something, doesn't mean you should act on it. It always gets back to the price action. If, if a stock is, is very strong, let's say alphabet, okay? And, it, and your indicator says, oh, it's, it's extremely overbought, it's extended. Doesn't mean it can't continue to go up, you know? So. You don't want to just take your indicators blindly. But there are some popular indicators that people use. One of them you said was moving average. Right. Um, signals are black and white. They're not gray. So when a uh, 50-day moving average crosses above a 200-day, very popular signal called the golden cross. A lot of people will follow that. It's, it's belated. You know, it's, it's after the turn. Right. It's okay. After the fact. But uh, people like that. And it can work well in a, in a trending market. And markets do trend. You also mentioned relative strength. Right. That's a, an overbought, oversold indicator. It goes back to the 1970s, and it tells you that over a 14-day look back, a price has gone up too fast or gone down too fast. It, it can continue to go up and can continue to go down, so that's kind of, you need to use them in the right... Uh, right, again, there's like a little psychology here with all this, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, this, other, this I, I have to admit, I don't know much about. Moving average convergence divergence. Okay. It's essentially three moving averages, three exponentially weighted moving averages, and um, it has the power of an oscillator. It goes back and forth around a zero line, and it has the strength of, of a trending indicator because it's moving averages. Very, very popular. It's been around a long time, and there's a number of ways to get signals from it, but it can, um, it, it has um, strengths, of, a couple strengths, and, and it's become very popular. And we're going to go over all these in more detail. And the final one, though, is on balance volume. You've talked about this before. One of my favorites goes back in the 1960s from Joe Granville. And it's simple math. If a stock closes up, we add the volume. If a stock closes down, we subtract volume. Huh. So if a stock is closing, if the line is going up, that means traders are being more aggressive. They're buying more, trading more shares when the stock is up on the day. Okay. And... Uh, it's, it's really simple, you know, and maybe too simple by some critics, but <laughs> it, it's, it can tell you that uh, traders are coming in and investors are coming in and they're paying up to buy a stock. Well, we're going to go through all four of these in the, following, in the upcoming videos. Moving average, relative strength, the MACD on unbalanced volume. In the meantime, follow Bruce at Bruce Kamich and, of course, on Real Money. Thank you, sir. <laughs>